All we have to do is decide. Decide to follow our hearts and to lead with the power that is in our soul. 50 years ago today, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was gunned down outside the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. Today, all across the country, people are remembering the civil rights icon while promising to keep his legacy alive and continue his work. As rallies are taking place across the country, people connected to Dr. King here in the Carolinas are remembering the impact he had on our community. I was 14 at the time. I remember it very well. Dr. King's legacy was cemented with the famous I Have a Dream speech on the Capitol Mall in Washington, D.C. in 1963. And the seeds of that speech were sown here in Charlotte. WVTV Steve Crump is live at the Grady Cole Center where Dr. King spoke back in 1960. Now, Steve, you've done wonderful documentaries on civil rights era, and I know you've talked with the men who fought alongside Dr. King. Yeah, that's true, Paul. You talk about this being the Grady Cole Center. Well, back in 1960, it was called the Park Center. And back on a day in September of that year, 2,700 people, the place was pretty much sold out, more or less here for a day that helped capture Charlotte in civil rights history. An uptown statue, Center City Street, and local school all validate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Images from Greensboro's Bennett College in 1958 and Charlotte's Johnson C. Smith University five years later demonstrated his commitment to historically black colleges in our state. I don't decide what is right or wrong. However, this trip to the Queen City during 1960 offered insight into a moment that would define his life. When you get somebody like Dr. King in town, the place is just packed and jammed. Kelly Alexander Jr. was among the many who packed the very full Park Center. It was an opportunity for the people who were the foot soldiers to actually see one of the generals of the movement in person, up close and personal. Weeks earlier, Charlotte integrated its restaurants following months of tense lunch counter sit-ins. Activist Charles Jones, who led the local student effort, rubbed elbows with him at the Park Center and would be arrested with King months later in Albany, Georgia and Montgomery, Alabama. As his image evolved, with the many things Martin was involved in. The local people wanted to be a part of that process. I have a dream. The word dream electrified the March on Washington, but an earlier version and vision of that speech was unleashed here in Charlotte. He gave one of the first speeches in which he used the dream metaphor. Historian Tom Hatchett marvels at the fact King used the term dream in his text 14 times during his well-publicized visit to Charlotte. The words were delivered in our city three years before such a profound gathering caused America to look at itself in a different way. He kept trying to find the, the way to say it that would catch people's imagination and finally in Washington on the march in Washington in 1963, he had it, but he was searching for it here in Charlotte. And that was quite a day here in Charlotte during 1960. All new coming your way tonight at six. We talked to people who call Charlotte home that were at King's funeral in Atlanta back in 1968. We'll see you then. For now, we're live from the Grady Cole Center. Steve Crump, WBTV on your side. New tonight. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. Powerful words from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Today marks 50 years since his assassination at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. Thousands are there today. Here are some live pictures as they commemorate his legacy and lasting impact on our entire country. And these are live pictures from Queens University. Uh, the school is set to honor Dr. King by ringing the clock tower bell 39 times. That's one time for each year of his life that was cut too short. The ceremony will start at 640. The bell ringing will take place at 705. One of the places where people have honored Dr. King's life is in Charlotte's Marshall Park. And that's where our Steve Crump is live tonight. Steve, fill us in. Yeah, Paul, all you have to do is look around Marshall Park and you see the statue of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that sits right off 3rd Street. It was put up back in 1980, some 12 years after his death. 50 years later, I'm, I'm delighted that I'm still having a hard time not choking up. Alec Coffin still 
chokes back the emotions a half century later. His Atlanta Constitution byline was connected to the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Coffin still has his funeral program and ticket from the 1968 service. You're just not a reporter. And in fact, right now, I think my heart is beating faster from just remembering that day. UNC Charlotte's Atkins Library is home to sign letters by King to Kelly Alexander Sr. of the North Carolina NAACP. But one very telling document came to local civil rights activist Reginald Hawkins from King in the last days of his life. He canceled a Charlotte visit scheduled for April 4th, 1968 deciding to stay in Memphis to help sanitation workers. Don Smits is the Associate Dean for Special Collections and University Archives. Well, it's incredible to have materials that were created by Dr. King um, in his possession, things that he wrote, his signature. I can recall sitting around Birmingham and Marion County, Alabama, having an opportunity to sit there with Dr. King. Among the mourners was former YMCA executive George Shinholster, who was assigned to crowd control duties in his role with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. As we all were feeling uh, that same sadness and that same sense of uh, emptiness, if you will, and yet we felt that same sense that though they killed the dream or they didn't kill the dream. Alec Hoffman agrees but raises a relevant point going all the way back to 1968. You know, we've changed but we haven't overcome and we haven't been transformed. And in many ways, Alec Hoffman sums it up best because on days like this, you're just not a reporter. Now we're live in Marshall Park. Steve Krupp, WBTV, on your side. Right, Steve, thanks so much. So well put. Uh, as we talk about uh, Wednesday being midweek, we're looking ahead to the weekend. Mm -hmm.